Hi, Tom here. In this week's video, I'll show you one way to draw a train track and a train in one point perspective. First, draw a horizontal line across the middle of your page. This is the horizon line, the height of the eye of the viewer in one point perspective. Next, draw a cross in the centre of this line and this will be the vanishing point. The vanishing point is the point where parallel lines that are going away from us will look like they meet. Next, draw two diagonal lines to the left for the rails of the train track. Now draw a series of horizontal lines with bigger gaps as they get closer to us. We now have our first train track in one point perspective. We can now draw another train track to the left in the same way as the first train track. Draw two track rails and then we can copy some of the sleepers or ties from the first train track to the new track, just sort of reading them across from the right to the left. Next, draw two vertical lines from one of the train track ties. This will be for the front of the train. I would make the top vertical line for the train higher than the horizon line, so it goes up. Now we can erase the horizon line here as we need the train to be in front of the horizon. Therefore, the horizon is not necessary in this point. Next, we can add some basic shapes to the front of the train engine. Again, using the vanishing point to find all of the sidelines that are going away from us. This train is based on an engine engine and it has quite a box like shape. But you could design your own engine front for your own train. Now we can divide the back lines of the train into a series of carriages. Basically draw a gap between two carriages several times, a vertical line with a curve. and these gaps get smaller and closer together as they recede from us, going towards the vanishing point. We could divide the side of the train into a series of windows and add some small details to the train engine too. We need some space for the wheels, but the wheels are not very visible. You can just imply them. They're sort of hidden. Next, we can add more detail to the train.
and then once you're ready and you've got as much detail as you would like we could add some tone you could add some tonal values for this drawing i'm going to have the sun the light source on the left although i'm not going to draw the sun but that's the direction of the light which means the shadows will all be going towards the right Remember to leave a gap between each shadow of each train carriage or car, and that should work quite well. Now we can draw another train on the right. This time I'll make it so the train is nearer us, but we start with a diagonal line from the vanishing point again, because all of these train tracks are parallel to each other and they're all going away from us, and we're looking straight ahead into the centre of the picture. We can read across the size of the train from the first train. So in perspective, if something isn't further away or closer by, but is just side by side, we can just read that across with a horizontal line at the base. In one point perspective, if something, for example a train carriage, is a certain height, we can copy that height to another part of the picture just by moving it left or right. But if something becomes closer, we need to make it bigger. And then if it's further away, clearly it needs to get smaller. And we do that by using the vanishing point as our guidelines and drawing two lines from the vanishing point, two diagonal lines to the top and bottom of the height of the thing that we're doing. And then anything that wants to be the same height, as long as it's between those two diagonal lines, will be in perspective. In this drawing, I'll make the tonal values quite strong on the train. We could shade in these gaps between the carriages on the right. To add a door, remember the vertical sides of the door or any vertical lines need to be, they need to stay vertical and not lean to the left or the right. So I tend to look at the edge of the paper or another vertical line that's already in the drawing and just copy that vertical line. The next stage in this drawing is to add some windows to the train. As these windows on the right are closer than the windows on the left, we could add a little bit more detail to them. We could add some shadows inside the windows and maybe some bars on the windows too. You could add some dark eternal values to the train if you want. As I want this drawing to look like it's a very light and bright day, I need to make the areas of the shadow quite dark. Next we can add some people to the platform, the train platform, which is the triangular shape between the trains. First read across their height horizontally from the train door, that would be useful. In this way we can be confident that the first person that we draw, if they walked to the train, if they didn't walk towards us and didn't walk away but just walked directly towards the train door, they would sort of fit in the door they'd be the right proportion to fit in the door. I will draw three people, I think, wearing clothes of draped fabric. As the light is on the left, we can add some shadows on the right, some cast shadows on the right. Once you have the first people, we can draw more people further away. First, draw a line from the feet and head of the first person that you have already drawn and draw these two lines 
these diagonal lines all the way to our vanishing point on the horizon. Any person will be in perspective with the first person if they are between these two diagonal lines. That's the easiest way to find out how to draw people in perspective. Once you have some people on the train platform, we could draw a vertical structure, a column, in the middle of our drawing, in the middle of the platform. For this column, we could make some structural shapes towards the top of the column to hold up a roof above the platform. So once you have some structural shapes, for this drawing I'm just going to draw some triangles and circles and make them symmetrical so they're the same on the left and the right. Then we could use our vanishing point to find the edges of the platform roof, again because it's in parallel to all of the other lines which are in parallel to us. Again, we could add some structural lines to the platform roof. And then for my drawing, I will shade in and make it quite dark. For this drawing, I'm using a 4B pencil. There are many ways to draw. If you'd like to be the first to know about my online drawing courses, please visit my website, circlelineartschool.com, and sign up to my email list. And then you'll be the first to know about the new courses that I make. For this drawing, I think I'll add a shadow cast from the platform roof onto the platform which is below but because the light's coming from the left I'll shift the shadow towards the right and put the shadow on the side of the train on the right as well. I hope you like this video and find it useful for your own drawings if so please leave a comment and suggest what drawings you'd like to see next. I read all the comments I receive. Thank you very much for your support. Keep drawing and see you next time with another drawing challenge.